what I'm doing here is I've got some tin canning. This panel was backed into years and years ago and it had a huge dent in the side of it and I tried to get it as much as I could but I've always had this tin canning here where the metal is actually um, stretched too much. So what I'm going to do is shrink this down. I already had a patch here that was really bad and that was tin canning like crazy but this bit has still got some. So what I'm going to do is heat up this section of metal you can see where it's really soft and use a wet rag on it and shrink it down. So let's see if that works. Actually, as I'm heating it, I can actually see the metal already flexing. It's going to heat the whole area up. It's sort of ballooning out. Just shut the torch off. It gets super, super hot. So I'm going to have to respray the inside, of course, because that's going to peel off because of the heat. Now, if you check it, see how the tin canning's gone? So the metal has shrunk back down and it should give me a much tighter panel that I can then uh, pull some of the, the dent out, push down the high spots and I should be able to fill that in a lot easier. So that's a pretty simple way to get rid of the, that tin canning effect. So it's pretty good all over that whole panel now. Fill up here. It's pretty good. I've also got some in the doors for the same reason because it was banged in again at the car park and I tried to get them out but I didn't know much about this heating technique at the time. So this is from watching Trev's blog again. So check out his amazing tips and ideas. Feeling over the panel now. This was really bad before, and I can't see it doing that anymore. Maybe there's a little bit there. And you can actually, if you watch the metal, you actually see it puffing out and expanding as I heat it, and then when I quench it, shrinking back down again. And yeah, if you if you fast forward, if you use the slider on the video and quickly skip through the section, fast forward and rewind, you'll see the, the metal bulging out as it gets heated and then contracting again when it's cooled. So it's very effective. Now that I watch this back, I realize I was using a bit too much heat, 
uh, because it actually ended up pulling itself in too far in some spots where I had to use a bit more filler than I would normally like. But because you've got access to this side panel from inside, it's a relatively easy section to work on because you can always uh, work it back into place. If you shrink it a bit too far, you can stretch it back out again. I also use a shrinking disc on my grinder, which is basically a big stainless steel plate that you uh, put onto the surface with an angle grinder and um, it heats up just certain high spots. That was really effective as well and it doesn't leave gouge marks or anything like that. So shrinking disc is a really good thing to have, but they're quite expensive. I've been working on the side for about an hour and managed to get a pretty smooth combination of shrinking disc on a grinder, um, my little butane torch here, which is really handy, and hammers and dollies, and my slapping file as well. But I've still got this dent here, which is in, I want to bring it out a little bit. So I'm going to use my paintless dent remover. I actually do have a, a weld on pull up, but it causes a lot of panel damage. So I'm just going to try this first. So basically, cover this with hot glue um, and then stick it in the spot. Let that cool down a bit. And then I'm going to use my pull up on the end of it and see if we can um, pull this dent out. So these are some images of the side. Once I had the, the main dents out, I then sprayed it with some epoxy primer, several coats, and then I applied this Evercoat filler, which is really allows you to really um, feather the edges and get it really smooth. And once I had the main deep dents covered, I sprayed it with epoxy. And then you can see there's still some bumps on it. And so I did another complete skim of Evercoat as well, and then sanded that, and then sprayed it all again with epoxy in the spots where it had broken through, and then sealed the whole thing in properly after this. And that gave me my final cover. And so here's the side after several skims of filler and sanding back with an orbital sander and block sanding as well. And then from here, the next step will be giving it a spray with some polyester filler. And then I will block sand it using a guide coat and then seal it finally with epoxy primer before putting the color coat on top. <laughs> 